So, next up we have Julie McCallan. Julie's, Julie's a clown, you know that? Yes. On so many, no. <laughs> she really is. She's been to school and everything for it, right? Yeah. Awesome. We really enjoyed Julie's uh, uh, presentation at the uh, St. Louis conference uh, about her, her journaling as she was going into the witnesses and coming back out. Always enjoy hearing uh, Julie speak. She's uh, connected with uh, forwitness.org, and uh, she's been conducting phone studies in the book of Galatians, and she's going to present today on Galatians 101, Defending Justification by Faith. Lord, we thank you so much that uh, Julie's here today. We thank you for her heart, for her ministry, and uh, we pray that your Holy Spirit uh, work mightily with her now as she speaks, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Is this working? I've never used one of these things. Can y'all hear me? All right, all right. Um, yeah, like Bob said, I was in Missouri and I gave my testimony and whew, get through that. And he talked to me afterwards and he said, oh, you're going to have to share that in Pennsylvania. I've already shared my, pen, my testimony in Pennsylvania before. I think that spot's open for somebody else. And I, was like, I guess if anything, maybe I'd you know, talk on a topic. I didn't consider that was an agreement. I just thought, you know, call me. <laughs> so about a month ago, I get a call from Bob Anderson that says, what's the title of your talk? I'm like, I'm giving a talk? Um, <laughs> so Galatians 101 and I'm a bit nervous because I'm up here with no notes at all. They're all just kind of floating around here. And um, I took a boat ride over to Michigan. That was the start of my trip. And then Amy and I road tripped here. Um, so I was putting together a little audience in, uh, participation thing first. So I'm going to need some victor uh, volunteers. Um, <laughs> see, I need the notes. Um, this is a conference called Witnesses Now for Jesus. So this first question is going to be kind of a no-brainer. I just need to know by raise of hands, how many people here really like Jesus? Yeah, yeah, so that, that's good, that's good. Now, out of, out of you who have raised your hands, how many would feel comfortable to come up here and help me with something on the stage? So I get a little less hands. Oh, I saw Brian's go up right away. Okay, Brian, come on up. And anyone else? Of course, Ed, but he's a firecracker. Um, how about let's go with a female boy? Nobody. Of course, Sharon. Of course, Sharon. Okay. Okay, we'll have Sharon. Hi. <laughs> Ta-da. Oh, no, 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 Ed, I didn't say you could come. I said, of course, Ed would. No, no. That was good. <laughs> Sorry, Ed. All right, come on up. Um, yeah, more technical stuff. So, does it work? No. Okay. And you're, testing, you're, testing. There you go. So, what is your name? I'm Brian Pope. Okay, and Brian, you're up here because I asked you a question. Do you really, really like Jesus? And you raised your hand. Is that true? That's true. Okay, that's good because I need that as a motivation. And you, Sharon, can you? Say your name. My, my name is Sharon, and yes, I do. I like Jesus. Okay. We're just going to end it right there. All right. Just give him a hand. Give him a hand. All right. Now, many of you know I am from Wisconsin, and there's a reason I asked that question, because I'm going to use these cheeses as motivation, because they really like cheeses. <laughs> No, they're good. I have them in the refrigerator, really. Um, and so that is going to be a free gift to you, okay? Jesus of Wisconsin or Jesus of Nazareth? Oh, yeah. Actually, I'm glad you asked. This is perfect. This is, can you get a camera? This is Satori cheese from Anigo, Wisconsin. My nephew works there, so if this YouTube video goes viral, I might get some commission. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> hi, Scott. Um, yeah, I have something else in here. Um, I, I'm guaranteeing you're going to get the cheeses, but I have a free gift. Do you like free gifts? 
Okay, and it's something that requires a little humility. If you could just wear those. Okay, okay. You just kind of open them up. Okay. So, you're looking good. You're looking good. Yeah, yeah. You know what? How I got those? You know, but you believe in creation and all that and, and God. Yeah, you know what? When God was passing out noses, I thought he said roses, so I asked for a big red one. So, <laughs> so anyways, I um, gave you those because you, you have the motivation. You like cheeses. So that's the motivation. You want to get close to Jesus. And then I gave you a free gift. So audience, have I charged them anything yet? No. no. Okay. So they, this is all free. And Brian, I'm going to start with you. Because you like Jesus so much, and you've, you've offered this humility of, you know, what I've given you, there's just, it's free. It's take it. You can, you can have the cheese. You can go down there with your nose. You get them both. You're done. That's it. That's all there is to it. Sharon. Sharon, Sharon, Sharon. You look so cute. Doesn't she look cute? Sharon, I... I still have this cheese over here for you, okay? Okay? Yeah, you're turning red. Yeah, good, because no, I won't have to. Um, Sharon, because you look so cute, I'm thinking, would you just, you know, take the mic? I think it works. And just tell the audience a knock-knock joke. I got the cheese over here. Knock-knock. Police. Police. Police, get me off this stage. <laughs> Was this planned? No. No. Wow, didn't she do great? Applause, 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 yeah. <laughs> Got to keep this in a safe place. Okay, so Sharon, I still got the cheese. And, you know, as long as you were so good at that, audience, I need some more participation. You, you into it? Okay. Yeah. I need to know, because being from Wisconsin, we do this a lot, you know. Do you guys know that one? Yeah. Okay, whoever knows it, just start the music. And Sharon... Yeah, this is all about the book of Galatians, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. All right, good, good, good. Isn't it good to know this can be on YouTube? There's a reason I picked Sharon. I knew it wouldn't humiliate her too much. Okay. But Sharon, I was thinking, yeah, I still got the cheese over here. Does she still got the same thing I gave to Brian? Yeah, I gave him a nose. She still got her nose. I didn't take it away from her. You just didn't get your cheese yet, but it's, it's over here. Sharon, would you give me 10000 bucks? Nope. You, you knocked on the doors, <laughs> and you, you did the dance, did. and you can't afford the next thing I'm asking for. Nope. There's a distance between you and this cheese, isn't there? Yes. Keep that in mind, audience. Okay. You're done. I'm not going to humiliate you anymore. So, but, hey, but I do give you the cheese. <laughs> Have fun. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Oh, Sharon, here, wait. I got to give you a hand. Here, here. There you go. So, well, that's it. I want to sit down now. Okay, there's a reason for that. Now you have a visual with, did Brian and Sharon receive the same thing without charge. Yes. I never once took it away from Sharon, and yet there was a distance between the object of her affection, the cheese, that nose just wasn't good enough. That nose is the gospel, okay? And <clears throat> there are, whew, now I'm getting nervous, <laughs> people in religion, uh, in, in, in Christendom, and even in the Watchtower, who do know the gospel. They have received it, and yet they experience a separation from Jesus, the real Jesus, not the cheeses. And that was my issue. I um, felt like, you know, what is the deal here? I, I know sin separates me from God, and I'm trying to be so good and I have a kind of a basic, I know Jesus died for my sins and stuff. But what had happened was, even after the watchtower, I had a mentality 
of something added. It, should I give you a knock-knock joke? Should I do the chicken dance for it? Can I give you $10,000? And yet the cheese, <laughs> I felt the separation grow. And um, this is why the book of Galatians is so important to me. I was reading... Did I forget to... I don't think so. That thing. Um, <laughs> I was reading Galatians chapter 5, and if you want to open up the book of Galatians, I'm not using PowerPoints. I don't personally agree with that. <laughs> I like to feel the Bible and get the pages unstuck. Um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 4, said it to me. There it says, you have been severed from Christ, you who are seeking to be justified by law. You've fallen from grace. And that just really hit me. I was like, that's the problem. Because as I read the book, I did not see that Paul was counseling the churches in Galatia with, um, you know, you've been out drinking and running around or anything. Um, and the issue there was just circumcision. And think about that. It's really not that big a deal. You know, you can keep your gospel. Well, <laughs> some of you adult men are cringing, but um, it's really not that big deal. And it's, it's kind of like a knock-knock joke. It's not that big deal. But, you know, she's got a sincerity that she wanted the cheese, and I gave her the free gift. So I let her keep the free gift, and yet I kept pulling it away from her. So when I understood that, I was very excited um, because, you know, I, I repented. I repented, it, and, and all the tools dropped out of my hands. Yes. And I always, we were talking about this this morning, like, when I'm in worship, I'm always remembering that moment that I got it, that the tools dropped out of my hands, that I didn't have to do the hammering, <laughs> that God had done it for me, and that all that was left was worship. That was an amazing moment. And because that's my experience, I think that's why I just like, I want to give that away. And the thing is, when Brian left the stage, he has a simple message to give away. I got the cheats. I got the gospel. <laughs> you know, it, it's just, there's nothing complicating it in between. Sharon, if she, you know, if I hadn't given her the cheese at the end, she's going to walk around with a message of what, you, you got the gospel, but you got to do the knock-knock joke and the dance and the, you know, all these other things in between. I think Paul was very aware of that, that he, that's why he didn't mess around in the book of Galatians. Like, that's okay, go ahead and get circumcised. No, he goes, you get circumcised, you're going to add all these other things. That's really going to mess up the message, you know. And that's what we fell into as Jehovah's Witnesses. We may have even had an element of the gospel, as uh, um, Rob had just brought out, that there are Jehovah's Witnesses has, who do know it. Um, but things have been added. So what happened with me after that, I had loved teaching as a Jehovah's Witness. I'm the witness that loved going door to door, loved conducting Bible studies. So it really hurt when I wasn't a witness, like, <laughs> what do I do with this, you know? and. Um, it was amazing how when God restored me and corrected that message, do not add works to my grace. <laughs> yeah. Um, once he restored that that's the right message, Julie, it was immediate, the teaching, because um, I got excited and wrote to Cletus, who was the pastor who took the time to help me through email, and I wrote to him all this stuff about, wow, the book of Galatians opened up to me, and I repented, and all this stuff, and I felt his grace, and... And um, what he had read in that letter, he said, I have a question for you, and I won't do this. You know, I'm, I'm getting permission from you, but boy, the things you wrote, it's not just Jehovah's Witnesses that need to hear this. It's the Church of Christ. It's, it's the Baptists. It's the Lutherans. It's, you know, he named off, he says, there's so many people, and he's a pastor, and he said, there's so many people in, in church that don't know grace the way you explained it there. And he said, do you mind if I share your letter with uh, a small group of people this Sunday. I was like, <laughs> wow. And I didn't even have to be there. And it's like, so I, so that's how I began uh, ministry, I guess. And um, then an ex Jehovah's Witness in my area uh, contacted me, knowing that I was, you know, 
faded, this fellowship, and she called just wanting to get together, and she was kind of a fade out. And um, I didn't want to, you know, get together and bash Jehovah's Witnesses or anything. When she called, I, I kept thinking, like, i got to eat Jesus into this conversation somehow so she knows. So either she just, like, oh, I don't want to get together with you or, yeah, tell me more. And it was just as simple as, um, you know, what have you been doing? You know, reading the Bible. And, oh, I've been thinking a lot about Jesus, just kind of wondering how she's going to react. And she's, oh, that sounds really nice. You want to come over? And um, so I went over, and um, we just kind of exchanged small talk and then fell into that wonderful <laughs> discussion when God enters the conversation, and it flowed, and uh, we were both very edified. And as I was leaving, now picture this. I, you know, we're both ex-witnesses. Ex-witnesses, what do we do? We go out offering home Bible studies, right? We've both done it. And we're standing in the doorway, and she says, this was really nice. This was so refreshing. And I knew she wasn't just talking about the small talk part. She goes, we should do this again. And we both kind of knew what was in that, like, and we said it at the same time, like a Bible study? And then we just cracked up because we realized we don't know how to do that. Like, we're not going to be, we don't have a Watchtower magazine. So this was 10 years ago. And she didn't even have a Bible in her home anymore. She got rid of her literature, you know. So she didn't even have a New World Translation. And I was reading out of an NIV at the time. And I said, okay, I'll bring over my New World Translation. And I'll read. And that was good because we could kind of compare. And so we started in the book of Galatians because that's where really my start was because that's where God led me to repent of that works mentality. And so little by little, verse by verse, you know, those whatever chains were falling off of her. And turn over to Galatians chapter 1. And Paul begins with his, his greeting and everything, so we know who's writing. And we look over those first five verses, and we know, okay, he's already writing to believers, the churches in Galatia. You know, so he's, he's not bringing something new to them, not a new gospel or anything. He's talking to people who have already received it. Just like the nose, I received freely, I gave freely. <laughs> and they went off with those noses. But in verse 6, he, he brings up this. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel. Now, when we stop right there, I think what conjures up in my mind when I say, oh, they had the gospel, now they have a different gospel. I tend to think, like, we take the gospel of Jesus away and we give him Muhammad or something, you know, or we give him atheism or something non, like, it has nothing to do with Jesus. That, that's what conjures up my mind. What's a different gospel? But then in verse 7 he says, which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. That's what you saw on stage there. I gave Sharon the gospel. I never took it from her, but I distorted it by adding to it. And so she didn't get her cheese. So that's, a, that's why my friend Cletus was saying, that's not just a Jehovah's Witness problem. It's in the church because there are people going around unless you speak in tongues. You're not really saved. Unless you read from a King James only you're not saved, you know, all these different things, unless you, you know, Saturday, Sabbath, all these things, and even ex-witnesses, you come out all free, you might fall into a church that that starts happening again. So we need to be solid in the foundation. And if the church, those who have, have never been, you know, involved with Jehovah's Witnesses, if they're stuck in that, how are we going to ask them to help us 
you know, can you, you know, when the, when the huge exodus of ex-witnesses come in, can they help them if they're still stuck in the thing? Like, well, that's good, you left the watchtower, but now you got to keep the Saturday Sabbath, now you got to speak in tongues, whatever it is that their issue is. So we all need to, to get back to like, well, what is the business with this different gospel and yet it's not another? And so um, what I love about this book, when I take someone through it, it makes us confront that. By verses 6 and 7, all of a sudden we have to ask that first question, what is the gospel? And recently, I, I do this with Jehovah's Witnesses, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, and oftentimes you guys can probably... <laughs> say it back before I do. I'm going to ask the question, not what you believe now to be the gospel, but as a Jehovah's Witness, and I say, what's the gospel? Anybody care to tell me what they think you would have responded as a Jehovah's Witness? Good news of the kingdom. Good news of the kingdom. Yep. So, and it would involve something like, well, what the good news of the kingdom is, is, you know, Armageddon's right around the corner and God's kingdom is, is coming. You need to get in the organization. So you need to carry the same message I'm carrying. So that was the gospel as a Jehovah's Witness. I know it was for me, knocking on doors, and I felt good about it for a long time. But really, at the end, what I was questioning, because I was very confident at the door, and when I started to get shaky it was because i was wondering do i have the right message you know that's what god was getting because again it's like i my issue wasn't going door to door and i liked the work i really did but i really started to question because i know now that was the holy spirit going you got the wrong message girl <laughs> and so i was i'd be like i don't know and um so that's why this book it, it just you know helped me get the message back um, so that, when Cletus shared, uh, you know, with his church, and then my ex was witness friend, and we went through Galatians, and then, um, like, that was 10 years ago, uh, 2007. In 2008, June of 2008, I joined Meetup, which we had a good 10-year run, and I know some of you from Meetup, which was, a, you know, an XJW um, online discussion group. And if you're on any Facebook groups, you know how topics can go all over the place. And it was like that on Meetup, you know, it's like, okay, let's talk about Trinity here, let's talk about, you know, my issues with church here, whatever. You're all over the place. And, um, and through that, I met a lot of people, and I did start to um, have telephone Bible studies, um, you know, without a real clear intention, like I am teaching a book in Galatians Bible study, but... I'd start to talk with people and say, well, you know, we're going all over the place. Let's center it. You know, let's get down to, you know, what is the gospel? Because I have this great letter here that really affected me. I'd like to share it with you. And so we would go through it. And um, in 2014, I decided, um, you know, why aren't we having this online Bible study on Meetup? So I thought, let's put it into, you know, print. And so what I did was just broke it down to, you know, Galatians chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. You know, what kind of questions could I ask there? So you could read the text and then ask, like, well, who is Paul addressing and all that stuff? You know, how, how does Paul feel about this congregation? Da, da, da. And, um, but, of course, we should get into 6 through 10. You got some meaty stuff. What is the gospel? Now you're actually teaching some good stuff, you know, and you're finding out where people are. And one of the people that had just joined in 2014 and started following it was Martha. And, um, and I have to be honest, and <laughs> Martha knows this, when she first came on, because you make your first impressions, I just thought, here's an ex another ex-witness that just wants to vent, just wants to tell their story of, well, I used to be an ex-witness, and then they're going to be gone. I didn't figure she'd be one of the ones that would latch on to the Bible study. Because, you know, it was free. What's that? <laughs> What was that? God had another plan, exactly, which tells me all the time, don't, don't judge it by, you know, flesh, eyes of flesh, you know. It's like everyone that would join that meetup, I'd say a prayer, but then I'd have my own, like, eh, this person, that person's going to want a Bible study, not that person, you know. Martha was eating it up in the background, you know. So she's like, and not only that, 
I was just blessed by a comment you had made on there that it wasn't just this. You were learning to study your Bible itself, cross-references, and, you know, and that's the thing. If you just start from any book, it's going to lead you to others. Go, why is he saying that? What, what was that about? And, you know, and it just, and don't you just love those times? Because I know a bunch of you do that. You start out with your morning Bible reader, and you're not even in the mood. You go, I'm going to do that. And before you know it, you've gone through everything. <laughs> so um, I thought, well, this is really cool. And some people were hearing about it. Um, somebody had contacted me and said, now, I, I hear you, you, you have this Galatians thing. Where can I find that? And I like always like nah, I'm gonna put it on a website sometime. <laughs> just never got around to it. Like, well, just take people through Galatians. I take it for granted. You know, I just think anyone else can do that. But I realize, you know, people do like little study guides and stuff. And um, so I was just making up my own study guide. And I said, well, just join Meetup, and you can just copy and paste what you want. And um, so that was always on the in the back cooker. Well, um, now. We've ended meetups, so I'm no longer as busy, you know, greeting new people as they come on and, you know, and getting in all these different <laughs> discussions. And um, Christy Darlington says, okay, so, you know, we're not going to have you running the meetup now. We want you to stay on the team. What do you want to do? And I said, well, I've been doing these phone Bible studies. I've been talking to everybody all over the place. I just let them know, hey, you want to study in Galatians? So I'm still doing the witness thing. Would you like a free home Bible study? Because I liked that, you know. That was part of me, you know. And, um, and so I've studied with ex-witnesses, and it's amazing how powerful this book is because I don't think it's the best book to take someone who hasn't had, a, you know, church background, really, you know, it, it's probably not the best book. But for somebody who, you know, they've been oppressed by religion, this is what's going on in this book. You've got the Church of Galatians, Galatia being harassed by these Judaizers who, you know, now like, well, that's okay. We'll let you keep your Jesus thing, but you got to get circumcised. And Paul saw what was coming. Oh, you get circumcised, now it's going to be the dietary laws. Before you know it, you're just, you're basically a Jew again. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I saw ex-witnesses coming to life because of what the Spirit caused Paul to write here. And so... Um, that's what I do, and that's uh, part of why I'm here is I, I want to promote that even though I don't have a PowerPoint, but I'm going to ask Sylvan to put the <laughs> website on there. But on forwitness.org, if you just type in Galatians 101 after the slash, you'll find what we're building. Um, it's not done yet. I don't have all the chapters up there yet, but there's, there's enough to look at. And so we're tweaking it, but um, that, and the reason for that is not just for an XJW who comes on and says, oh, Maybe I can learn from this. It's also the Christian who has that heart but just doesn't quite know where to start. Then I'm, it's a suggestion. Start them out in the book of Galatians and um, give them a little tool. And it's not like you have to follow it all, but it, it's a place to start. But also because I have a real passion for the church and I'm realizing, like, what are the problems? You cannot just go into the church and say, Let's reach out to Jehovah's Witnesses <laughs> because there's a lot of intimidation with that. And think of it. I mean, if someone said reach out to Muslims, I, I have not studied that faith. I don't know all the ins and outs. I mean, I'm intimidated by that. And so I realize that about the church. Um, but, again, it's like if the church has their foundation straight and, and you ask a, a Christian, could you, like, how would you explain the gospel? And you find out that there's a lot of Christians that can't. A lot of Christians talk about their church lifestyle. What, that's what a lot of people have actually come into. And um, that's good and bad. And even when um, the church I'm at right now, I'm, I'm teaching a class on Galatians. When I went to the class uh, orientation, you know, to, for uh, leaders, it's not a bad thing, but it was just subtle enough to me, like, I'm not, that's not my reason. It was all about, like, well, people want to be in small groups because you want to meet people and you want to make friends. And, like, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. But I kind of go at it the opposite. I'm like, I have a lot of friends, and I realize, how did we get close? Because we had a Bible study, <laughs> you know. 
And we're founded in the gospel. We know what we're talking about when we talk about our Jesus. And it's like, I realize the church has grown a lot of times based on lifestyles. We invite people to the church, and it's a lovely worship service, and it's a nice, you know, there's things going on. It's like, how is it that these people, when I ask them what the gospel is, they really don't quite know how to respond, you know. So uh, an experience I had recently, um, uh, two people that were in this class, a married couple, and um, the husband had studied with Jehovah's Witnesses at one time. And the wife uh, had a Catholic background, and so she admitted, I don't really know my Bible very well, and that's why she was very interested in the class. But what she did have was a lot of faith, because when her husband started to study the Bible with Jehovah's Witnesses, she knew something was wrong. And she had gone and asked for prayer, and, and, uh, and, and he, he didn't proceed to get baptized, so that, that's good. But here they are both at this church, and, and we're studying this, and right away I said, so how would you explain the gospel? And she just gave me a blank stare. And I said, that's okay, that's okay, you know, I understand. And I said, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you know. And so if you want to turn there, um, and I'm sure many of you uh, know this, but 1 Corinthians 15, I think, is the most succinct. <laughs> it just comes right out and says it. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the first four ver verses. And Paul is writing this. He says, now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and which you also stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, oh, we know, he received the gospel, he passed it on to them, by this they're saved. What is the gospel? Here it is. Here's what I delivered to you. As of first importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised and on, the third day, on the third day according to the scriptures. That's just like, and that gets you in that zone of being able to talk about that. What's that mean to you? Why, what did that mean to the Jews at the time? What did that mean to those Gentiles at that time? What does it mean to you in this day? Is this just a history lesson? You know, and, and so next week that we had already talked a lot about the gospel and kind of did a repeat. Okay, remember what we talked about last week? What's the gospel? She, oh, yeah, she says, and she was excited. You know, that's that. It's simple, you know. And, and as we were talking, she brought out her husband. She, I kind of got in the middle of a little bit of a marital spat there. She goes, well, yeah, and your friend started telling you about that Sabbath thing. And I'm sitting there, and he goes, well, yeah, he knows his Bible. And she said, oh, yeah, but you'd call me while you're driving, and, and it's like I could feel that the JW stuff was coming on again. And it was, but it wasn't the JW stuff. It was a new thing. It was you got you to keep that Sabbath. You can't work on Saturday. You got to, you know, worship on Saturday. And he was being affected. And he kept defending, but, you know, his friend that, you know, but he knows his Bible. He's really smart. He's always reading the Bible. He's a good guy. And, and I said, would you say he has, you know, this gospel that we just read from 1 Corinthians? He goes, oh, yeah, he's gospel. I said, so would you call what he's teaching you a different gospel? He goes, no, it's not a different gospel. It's more like a Jesus plus. And in that short time, his wife, who had the first class said, you know, I don't know the Bible, and, you know, like, that's okay, we're going to learn it here. I, you know, I would look at her as someone like a pretty ill-equipped Christian, but she got faith. She was the one, she, like, took over. I was like, I didn't have to do it. She was like, yeah, but that's a different gospel, she's saying. And he kept going back to, but it's more like a Jesus plus, and we're like, we just go right back into Galatians and go like, okay, let's reread this then. You know, what did Paul call it? And we were centering on verse 6 and 7 there. I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel. And then it says, which is really not another it's just a perverted version. It's distorted. It's what happened there with Sharon. I let her keep that gospel. She still had that nose.
but I made her add things to it, and as I did, separation occurred, deserting him. And, and like Paul says in Galatians, then if you do that, Christ really has no value to you because what are you doing? Now your whole lifestyle has become complicated and hard. I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that. And, you, and that's the message you carry around. So that to me is the, the great value of this book as I take people through it. And the other topics, just quick, you know, that, that's the foundation. Thing. And um, Galatians 2. Uh, 15, how, how do you get around this, this whole passage? Uh, starting at verse 16. Nevertheless, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Christ Jesus, even we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law, since by the works of the law no flesh will be justified. My theory is that if you've got the Christian out there, you're saying, you can do this, you can witness to a Jehovah's Witness. I, I don't know enough the Bible. Well, memorize that one. <laughs> Plant a seed, you know. Become familiar with just one. I mean, it's only six chapters. So that's my thought is just narrow it down for them. And you know what? We all know this. You get into one book, you start exploring the rest. So I think there's Christians sitting in churches that are still intimidated by this book, and, and they don't know the treasures yet, so they start learning one, and, and, and it opens up. And so that's, we, we discuss the gospel, we discuss how hypocrisy enters the church and how it enters, uh, you know, what God's view of righteousness is as compared to what we may have been taught. Um, and I love talking about the covenants, the differences between the Abrahamic covenant and the Mosaic covenant. And um, then getting into chapter 6, who is the Israel of God. So it covers so many topics in such a short book. And so I really would just encourage everyone to read the book of Galatians for yourself, but also to keep in mind that this is a powerful way to help somebody who's in a trap of legalism, as I was, and poor Sharon over there who didn't get her, her cheese for so long. <laughs> So uh, I thank you for listening, and I hope that you will check out the Galatians 101 as we build it on forwitness.org. Thank you.